welcome to the seventh webinar of the Evolve project on the subject of public transport service KPI assessment and traffic congestion estimation. I'm uh, Eleonora Ercoli from Memex, a transport engineering consultancy company based in Italy and working in the field of intelligent transport systems, urban pu public transport and mobility, logistics and uh, smart cities. Uh, Memex is partner of the Evolve uh, Consortium and uh, has organized today's webinar together with other two partners of the project, uh, namely Neurocom Luxembourg and uh, TM Neurocom, is a software development company uh, with expertise into data engineering across different usage domains uh, with multidisciplinary requirements featured with business critical operations, mainly in the areas of telecoms and transport. TM is a public transport service company operating in the southern and central part of Tuscany in Italy. Um, so before entering into the, um, the agenda's details, uh, I would just like to give you a, a quick uh, introduction to the Evolve project. Evolve is uh, an European innovation action start, started in December 2018, with, which has built a large scale testbed that integrates technology from the high performance computing, big data and cloud work, words. Uh, the benefits of the platform are being demonstrated through seven pilots implemented in several domains, mostly from mobility, but also from agriculture and uh, urban planning. So today's webinar aims to present the results and advantages of tools developed by Evolve for no real-time and real-time monitoring public transport service KPI, focusing on specific and real use cases concerning the context of uh, TM, as I said before, operating in the um, southern and central part of Tuscany. So looking at today's agenda, we will start with a presentation by Neurocom on the introduction of technological concepts on which is based the Volvo project. So the activities carried out, the outcomes and benefits achieved. Uh, then the TM Laboratory for Fleet Control will be presented by uh, TM and Mamex. And finally, a presentation of real-time and no real-time tools for public transport services quality assessment and validation and traffic congestion monitoring will be presented by Mamex. After the end of the presentation, there will be a question and answer session during which uh, your questions and feedback uh, will be discussed with, uh, with the speakers. And so uh, I just remind you that you can write your questions and comments in the chat box um, or in the specific question and answer uh, box uh, uh, you find at the, at the bottom of the screen. Uh, so the webinar will last approximately one hour. Um, before uh, starting, I also remind the speaker to uh, remain with your camera on during your presentations and during the final question and answer session. Uh, the webinar will be recorded and will be made available in the media channels of the Evolve project. So I will immediately pass the floor to Mr. Vasilis Pitadakis, Research and Innovation Manager uh, at Neurocom, and Mrs. Christy Simeonidou, uh, Senior Software and Data Engineer uh, at Neurocom. They're here with us uh, to present uh, you how they adapted the public transport network data pipelines of TM and transport operations into Evolve platform. So the challenges they faced and the gains achieved. Vasilis and Christy, the floor is yours. Thank you, Leonora. Let me share my presentation. So I assume that you can all see my screen. Um, yes, Vasilis, thanks. Okay, thank you. So my name is Vasilis Dadakis. I'm representing uh, Neurocom Luxembourg in uh, this project, in Evolve project. Uh, as Eleonora mentioned, uh, Evolve is an Horizon 2020 project that aimed at combining the features of high performance computing, big data, and cloud computing to create an infrastructure and ecosystems uh, where the users can define and deploy complex application processes with uh, dealing with huge amounts of data. Uh, with simplicity and efficiency provided by the cloud infrastructures. 
um, as well as exploit the HPC features enabled by appropriate processing and storage components. Uh, Evolve is being demonstrated to, through seven use cases uh, from different uh, business areas. And the main target of the project was actually to expand uh, the big data ecosystems to more business domains and facilitate the innovation uptake, especially for innovations that require demanding processing workflows. And uh, the main the means to achieve this is the easiness, the easing, the workflow design and deployment process of these large data pipelines. So the project was building, is actually built and uh, in a continuous mode, uh, many different software components, uh, interface with users, middleware components for energy and performance uh, uh, aware jobs and scheduling of resources, for scheduling of resources, as well as interface with hardware, uh, all these hardware resources. There was a continuous deployment and development and uh, updating and uh, improvement of these components in the infrastructure layer, in the system software layer, in the resource management layer, and which was actually all of them utilized by the various workloads, the diverse workload. And this was the challenging part of this project in all, as we have a continuous evolution of the whole project while we were also deploying our workflows um, on, on, on the evolved platform. Now, focusing on, 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 on the bus transportation use case, um, in, in, in very briefly, we, we, we actually uh, dealt with two, uh, two data pipelines, the offline activity, where we get uh, in a batch mode, a lot of data from the public transport network, and we analyze them in order to compare and how the operated uh, service uh, is performing uh, in comparison with the scheduled service. So this is a very important decision support tool for, for the authority, for the public transport authority and the operator. And in the real-time context, the operator needs to have a, an instant view of where there are problems, because mainly of congestion, in, in its network. And this is also a very useful information in order to, not only for, for them, for the authority and the operator, but also if it is possible to disseminate this information to its customers. So we have two different, um, the, these were the, the two different uh, workflows uh, which were deployed uh, on the Evolve. We used various technologies in order to do this, Java, Scala, Angular, uh, Google Maps, uh, but the main components that were uh, exploited, uh, the main components of the Evolve workflow were Spark, the, the Apache Spark and Big Data uh, framework, uh, Flash Storage, a specific uh, performant uh, uh, flash storage uh, provided by our partners, uh, IME we named, and uh, the Spark Streaming Engine for the processing the real-time data stream. Uh, all these were utilized uh, together with uh, enabled through Argo workflow uh, uh, facility, uh, Kafka ingestion, uh, the Apache Kafka ingestion engine. Uh, all of them dockerized, uh, containerized using Docker and uh, uh, running on Kubernetes nodes, so that to finally exploit all these uh, platform abilities to improve the decision support for public transport operation. Uh, finally, we achieved um, to, to perform past analysis on data, not just on one month data as it was possible before the whole, but on yearly data, as well as we now are able to, uh, to process and visualize real time data which was not possible before evolve. But let's focus now on these two uh, data pipelines. First, we start with the offline data pipeline and where uh, we have uh, a scheduled uh, getter component which uh, takes the data from the transport network. Uh, we have three types of data, actually. Um, we have scheduled service data, uh, we have collected service data during the service operation, historical events, and we have bus events from, from the transport network. What we are doing is that uh, on a daily basis, we are getting uh, on batch mode uh, these data from, from, the net, from the transport operator. And um, uh, there's a continuous data ingestion pipeline that has been developed, which runs on, the, on top of the evolving structure from this region. 
And uh, this uh, component is running as a separate Docker container deployed on Kubernetes, which is actually the case for all stages of the platform. All these boxes are separate um, Docker containers running on, uh, on the Kubernetes cluster. So we get this data and um, we use several microservices uh, such as uh, Kafka and Argo workflow to ingest the data. And then uh, we, we collect uh, the data sets uh, and we produce messages containing the type of the file and the data set itself. There is a, 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 a router, a, a data router based on, on camel, on Apache camel, which actually decides based on the type of file, what processing will follow. So based on our Google flow, uh, the camel, uh, the Apache camel router uh, gets on, consumes these Kafka uh, messages. And uh, there's a, an, another step in the our Google flow, uh, which it consumes these uh, messages and, and triggers uh, the Spark processing, which finally processes these processes these data sets and produces the final um, uh, data tables that will need to be visualized uh, at the final stage of the of the of the workflow. Um, so here we see the Kafka gateway, which consumes these messages from the Kafka topic and the Kafka sensor. These are work Argo workflow steps, which pro, which triggers the Spark process, uh, which finally delivers the, the results, the analytical results, which needs to be visualized. So, in order to be visualized, we want it to keep the same application as uh, the operator was using before Evolve, which is a Power BI analytic, a business intelligence tool based on Microsoft BI Power BI. So this is the reason we use the Spark Thrift server, which is a, a, an ODBC, JDBC, ODBC um, interface of, of, of Spark that allows remote clients to access Spark and use its SQL execution. Uh, and so through, through this interface, we, uh, uh, we were able to, to take benefits of the Spark uh, performance query engine while not having uh, to make any changes in the visualization stage. Um, we performed here, a, a, actually Spark 3 server uh, uses a Metastore database that stores the data regarding the tables and the data warehouse, uh, which stores the actual uh, data. Uh, in our case, we use the Spark warehouse, which is utilizing last file system. And then we also utilize the IME, the flash storage. And the meta, for the meta store where we, uh, we use the relational database, we kept uh, uh, the metadata. The historical data are kept in last in, in, on the IME. We, in, in, in the next presentation, we will see all this uh, presented in, uh, through the demonstration. In the real, on the real time context, we have more or less a similar pipeline. We have these data. Uh, which uh, are, are taken daily into the data pipeline. Uh, this is also a batch, let's say, part of this uh, workflow where we again get this data and we, we process the, the data to produce the arc travel times of, of the network uh, in the past. However, in parallel, we have a continuous data stream, uh, which has actually the, uh, the, the bus events, which are produced by the buses. Uh, from the transport network. And, and uh, for this real time, uh, although we, we have the same more or less data pipeline uh, as in the offline case, for the streaming part, uh, the, the, the consumer of these messages is a Spark streaming uh, and the Spark streaming engine, which uh, has to continuously process these events and calculate their travel times, compare them with uh, the historical data that have been produced through the offline part of the workflow, so that to characterize the arc travel times and uh, in respect to their status, which is either congested, free without, no, without any congestion, or breaking. Uh, so that in the final stage, we, we format all these data and we provide them 
to the uh, visualization stage of, uh, of the work platform, which is based on the web laser technology, in order to visualize the, the arcs of the transport network with a separate color, different separate color, uh, according to, 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 to the status, uh, whether it is uh, congested, free, or, or, or breaking. Uh, we have also uh, experimented and exercised uh, the, the, another visualization component of, of based on Zeppelin notebook, just to provide ad hoc uh, visualization uh, and query results. Uh, this is actually an exercise that, that we did in order to check to see also how Zeppelin visualization can be deployed on our data. Uh, actually, we, we, we have experimented and we have uh, utilized three different types of, of visualization on top of these pipelines, the business intelligence tools, the Zeppelin, and the web laser technology, which is also integrated within the Evolve uh, platform. So what uh, we, we faced all this uh, process of onboarding to the, to the high performance computing platform involvement of Spark, uh, which is an, a challenging uh, for, for both use cases, a challenging task. Um, uh, one important issue is to exploit the flash storage, and uh, which is actually a, a storage uh, component, uh, which is very performant on, on, on insertion. So we, Use it for uh, for ingestion. We 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 gained. Uh, we have specific case because of of IME. IME is a scale out software defined flash storage platform that streams the data path for application input output. It interfaces directly to applications and secures I/O uh, via a data path that eliminates file system bottlenecks. And this is the reason why it is boosting insertions. Uh, we also moved further on from Spark version two to Spark version three. In order to, to exploit and enable the GPU accelerated queries, uh, this was also achieving better integration with Kubernetes and resolved issues with the no ICD, ICD nature of version uh, 2 Spark, Spark version 2 on, version two on the parallel data. Uh, another issue and another challenge was to, to, to perform data partition, the part data partition, which was required to achieve scalability. We use table partitioning, partitioning on the date columns to divide our data set into smaller parts. And this made, made the read operations faster since the data sets uh, were uh, are, are becoming uh, smaller. Let's take a quick view on our performance indicators. Uh, first of all, we have this time period, this performance indicator, which is the time period that is covered by the analysis. Before Evolve, it was just one month that the operator could achieve. Now we work with three months with shorter running times, and actually we, uh, we are now working with 12 months uh, data. Uh, we have a query of a listing uh, that lists the trips operated in a period of interest, along with uh, the extracted events, the bus events that fall into this period. Uh, we had a KPI, we had an indicator of 20 minutes needing to extract 80,000, 86,000 records from uh, the SQL database. And now the same query runs on Evolve in less than one minute, actually in 10 seconds for when we were having three months data and in 21 seconds when we've had uh, one and a half year uh, data. There's a daily query that is being run by the operator, which is the summary of, which provides a summary of transit time analysis carried out the last 30, 60 or 90 days of service. Uh, before Evolve, we were experiencing uh, two minutes uh, execution time up to half an hour execution time for 90 days period. Well, now uh, in 10 to 15 seconds, we get the result for all types of, for all time uh, windows. So we have a, a, a very uh, big uh, launch speed up. Um, in the real time uh, context, we, okay, we have, we had no past experience, but uh, we were targeting to be able to visualize the real-time status of, of three selected line routes in less than 10 seconds. Now we're experimenting with results which are less than six seconds. I'm saying we're experimenting because we are still at the last phase where we, we are uh, uh, setting up the visualization with web lizard. However, the, the result is being delivered in less than six seconds. And last but not least, uh, the number of arcs that can be processed and visualized simultaneously, simultaneously with related up-to-date information, 
it is also a, a, a performance indicator for, for the transport operator. Uh, initially, we were targeting for uh, an execution time less than 20 seconds to be able to, to process and visualize 21,000 arcs. Uh, now, in, 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 the, in the field of processing, we can, visual, we, we can process 13 million arcs in total in uh, 160 seconds, uh, where all these filter art travel times are calculated, which is actually the processing, where, where there's actually the, the, the biggest part of the processing burden. So the gains after all, uh, if we need to uh, summarize uh, what, what the operator gains in, the, in these two, from these two uh, pipelines that we have been adapted to evolve. Uh, first of all, migrating public transport data pipelines to evolve, it magnified the level of data volume that can be processed. This means that we can analyze higher team time periods that we can analyze larger geographical transport network areas. And it, we can also uh, deploy higher data frequencies, which means that we can have improved, we can improve the accuracy of the decisions of the, and the data that we are uh, providing. Uh, second point, the, the ability to, to, to have real-time use, use over a, such a huge network, over such a big network, is not just a thought or the wishful thinking, now it, it becomes a reality uh, through similar adaptation of, of, of the data pipeline uh, by exploiting the, the, the Spark streaming component of, of the platform. The most important, uh, another important uh, gain is that now we, we have the ability to take benefit of upcoming high performance computing, computing infrastructure and features uh, because Evolve has this flexibility, uh, like tools like the Evolve dashboard, which is a pipeline editing tools where you can make modifications on the pipeline and the data stages of, of the pipeline. You can add a different uh, stage, you can use different resources without having to, uh, to, to change other things in your, in your overall uh, pipeline. And for, uh, of course, by Exercising with all these uh, alternative visualization tools, uh, we, we got enhanced business abilities based on the advanced visualization, especially uh, the one that we are uh, experiencing with uh, the existing Power BI application, as well as with the, the Web Lizard uh, technology, which is uh, integrated in the above platform. So these are significant gains. Uh, for the operations and the decision support uh, processes of, of the operate of the transport operator with the authority. Um, I don't have any more uh, uh, things to add, so thank you for listening, and uh, we can go on with the, um, the next presentation. Thank you very much, Vasilis. Thank you very much, Christy, for your for this interesting presentation. Uh, we are going so to keep moving and uh, pass over to uh, Mauro Pallari, uh, TM IT responsible, uh, and together with Giorgio Ambrosino, MEMEX technical director, uh, we show you the TM laboratory for fluid control. So Giorgio, Mauro, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you very much for the presentation and uh, for the invitation that uh, I will do this presentation very short uh, on the contest uh, where we work uh, uh, with uh, Evolve, in which contest, operation contest, and which uh, technological contest uh, we work. I made uh, this uh, presentation uh, with uh, Mauro Pallari. Yes, sorry, I will uh, uh, share my screen. I don't know if you see now my screen yes Giorgio thank you sorry yes I share this presentation with Mauro Pallari Mauro is the IT platform responsible of the TM and who is TM that we should set up the scenario where I don't know if you see all the okay it's better now 
Yes, we can see it perfectly. Thanks. Okay, sorry. And uh, uh, which is the, the contest, uh, operational contest, uh, technological contest, uh, public transport service contest, where uh, evolve, uh, uh, define, uh, develop this solution. We are talking about TM, it's uh, the, one of uh, the 10 largest uh, transport operator uh, in Italy, operating the Sud uh, Toscan with uh, a relevant uh, figures like 40 million of passengers per year and uh, uh, very important uh, uh, around 700 um, or oh, more than 700 bus uh, uh, dedicated to, do, to different uh, service. And then the, what, which are the service that uh, we uh, we we monitoring and we work on that clearly the great part of uh, the service are uh, what we call conventional service that uh, are the service uh, uh, based on uh, uh, fixed route, uh, fixed time uh, and, and fixed uh, stops that you see that uh, the, the kilometer covered for the urban, extra-urban public transport are more than mm, 25 million. That there are another set of the service related to tourism, school bus, long distance, uh, and uh, shuttle bus, uh, uh, um, demand responsive service that are covered with uh, different uh, scheme and different uh, uh, different uh, vehicle from the november to uh, from the next november the part of uh, the service the service uh, uh, dedicate uh, the conventional service uh, will be operated by Autolinea Toscane is uh, the Italian brand of RATP DEV due to the results of the procurement. That this means uh, that uh, the part of urban, extra-urban public transport will be operated from the next November by the Autolinea Toscane. It's clearly that uh, we don't have a clear idea of uh, the operation scenario if we don't talk about uh, the IT uh, support system. And uh, in the public transport, as all the experts uh, and also the transport company technicians know, the uh, automatic vehicle monitoring or automatic vehicle location is uh, the central system for uh, uh, controlling and acting on regularity, reliability of the service, uh, uh, control of quality, and uh, uh, reporting of the service. Uh, it's clearly that this is the kind of system is a fundamental not only for uh, fleet monitoring but also for reporting all the, the uh, KPI of the service. So the AVM system uh, it's uh, the ancillary system uh, for providing uh, user information or uh, adapting uh, the ticketing systems or asking the priority to the traffic light. In TM, to come, uh, to, come uh, to the operational scenario of TM, uh, the system used are two, are uh, the classic uh, IVM system that uh, is uh, represented here on, uh, on this uh, uh, scheme and uh, a simple system based on app. Uh, on app, and then we are two type of fleet uh, monitoring system for two great uh, type of the service for the conventional service that I showed before. Uh, 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 these are controlled by a, a classic IBM system for the other service schemes like school bus or demo responsive transport service or the, uh, <coughs> the feeder service use the CELSO system that uh, is uh, based on an app 
and acted in uh, Evolve as a site test bed. And the IBM system for the general uh, the control of the general and conventional service was used for the standard service and for the two uh, proof of concept that uh, two of the three uh, proof of concept that uh, we uh, we for, we implemented in uh, in uh, uh, Toscana Sud ATM uh, solution. This is I don't want to enter because uh, it's a, a little uh, um, detailed uh, slide. But uh, uh, for the test bed, uh, the Celso application was tailored for the needed. Uh, of evolve as Vasilis well explain and Claudio will uh, will uh, will present uh, the results. But I wanted to say that uh, the main uh, class of functionality are uh, first of all uh, the, for uh, from planning the route uh, to reporting the route. Then is the fleet monitoring and. Uh, 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 info, user info, uh, information provision, and it's clearly the in interaction with the driver uh, with onboard uh, onboard app based on the uh, tablet that could allow the dialogue from the central control and the dri uh, driver for real-time communication, bus service uh, monitoring and other functionality, not last uh, bus occupancy rate. As we, I, say, uh, I said that for the, uh, the first two uh, POC, uh, we work for uh, with Celso as a test bed in uh, Piombino area that uh, is uh, uh, an area around Piombino uh, that is uh, is a, a small town with 50,000 inhabitants and uh, the in, in uh, integrated with the other uh, the AVM system working on the area of Grosseto, Arezzo e Siena that are the main cities uh, town of Toscana Sud. <coughs> and um, with uh, the different data set uh, uh, that are, uh, was integrated in Evolve uh, workflow. What means that integrated scenario developed a bit, uh, with test bed and the first and second POC that we, uh, we work on the existing IBM system and uh, Chelsea system, but we work to uh, uh, tune it and, uh, <coughs> and develop a web service for providing a integrated set of da data for from one side the real time workflow as vasilis explained uh, with the aim to understand for the for the to understand the traffic condition on the network uh, verifying the uh, travel time on the single segment of uh, the public transport network and for the offline wor uh, workflow, we make uh, the analysis, the post elaboration uh, analysis. That these uh, are the, the, uh, the, the first scenario of the two uh, POX integrated with uh, the test bed. The third uh, POX was uh, the, uh, post, uh, the integration of the, the, the ABM. Uh, the AVM AVL data with the data of the automatic fair system, collection system, the ticketed system for uh, uh, georeferencing the data 
and then to, to work for the data collection and data elaboration for uh, managing this data and understanding uh, the, the demand of a single a single line and a single trip on the line, uh, the demand through the analysis of the georeferenced uh, ticketing data. Claudio, clearly better than me, will present this tool uh, um, developed for offline service analysis and for real time traffic congestion. Uh, monitor monitoring and identification of the critical situation. Uh, this is uh, 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 all for, for from our side. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Giorgio. So uh, as you already uh, mentioned, uh, I will pass the floor to Claudio, MAMEX uh, ITS responsible for the last but not least in importance presentation of the day. So Claudio, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Leonora. Okay, uh, as said, my presentation, this with uh, the presentation of the real time and the offline tools. Uh, but before to show them, I like to, to, to present again the slide, the similar slide uh, showed by Vasilis before, because I'd like to remark uh, some aspect uh, um, concerning the, the use cases uh, and uh, the, the, the tools that developed in the, in the world project. Concerning the, the offline dashboard tool, uh, we have to, to say that uh, its main objective is to improve the public transport service contract management, both from PTO and PTA point of view. And uh, for this reason, uh, the main target is uh, are to verify the service contract compliance and to identify the public transport service and network critical issues in order to optimize the scheduled service. For this reason, the work, the, um, the offline workflow uh, provide the data to the data analytics tool that is uh, the offline dashboard in order to obtain as outcomes the feedback to be provided uh, to the planning responsible and uh, uh, to provide the data for the service uh, reporting to the public transport authority. Whereas from the real time uh, tool, the, the, the main target is to identify the traffic situation on the public transport network. And uh, uh, in this case, the real time workflow provided the data for the evaluation of the, the travel time during the operating bus. And in this case, the, uh, the outcomes uh, um, will be shared with uh, uh, external tool, external app uh, through dedicated uh, web services, or uh, they can be used as in the case of the Evolve uh, project uh, with a specific tool uh, in order to monitor the, um, the traffic congestion on the public transport network. Uh, the Evolve project has been based on several business problems and in particular for the offline uh, use case, uh, the main one uh, need is, is uh, uh, to facilitate the aggregation of the public transport service data in order to identify the gaps between the scheduled and the operated service. Whereas from the real time, for the real time uh, use case, uh, the main objective is uh, to, to develop a tool uh, able to support the service monitoring activity, increasing the, the, the amount of user information uh, displayed on the operator workstation and uh, decreasing the, the, the running time for the road congestion notification process. So starting uh, from the offline dashboard, uh, I can provide to you some additional information as we bring it to this for question. And uh, in particular, we can say that the main end user are the contracting authority and the public transport bus company. And that uh, the AVM system is the main provider of needed services data. Um, and, uh, but we have also to underline that thanks to the, the offline dashboard, uh, we had the, 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 the possibility to achieve several benefits, several outcomes, as in, in example, the, the possibility to, to identify the service and network critical issues and to uh, in, in, increase the running time for the public transport service data analysis that uh, has been estimated around the 70%. Uh, 
And uh, uh, as last point, we can say that uh, the offline dashboard is uh, able also to support the operator during the visualization uh, of the key service information uh, in order to support the work during the identification of the critical issues. Uh, so uh, now I, 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 I interest you. I introduce to you, to you the, the tool, and this is the, the first page, that is the filter page, where are available several uh, tools, uh, several filters in order to select uh, the service and the period of interest. In fact, we have the possibility to select the time period, the kind of public transport service operated, the, um, the area, the operational group, and the operational unit. Um, on the basis of this filter, there is the possibility to focus the analysis on specific requirements. And moving to the second page of the tool, uh, the, the result of, of the selection made before are grouped in, in four tables um, uh, where the, the, the records are grouped by lines and by path and are highlighted in different color from the green one to the red one on the basis of the, the, the discrepancies between the scheduled and the operated service. Furthermore, in the same page are available additional information concerning the, uh, the service selected uh, before, and there is the possibility uh, to apply uh, further filters uh, by line and by path in order to focus the, the, the analysis again. And as uh, we can see in this slide, the, in this case, the record uh, related the, the services selected that in, in our case is uh, the line zero to seven uh, have been reported in the table and highlighted. In the third page of the tool, we have two main tables. The first one is the table A, uh, where uh, uh, is presented the, the, the list of the trips concerning the service selected before. Uh, also in this case, the record highlighted a different color on the basis of, of the discrepancies. Uh, from the point of view of the length and the duration, um, whereas in the table B are presented the list of transit uh, concerning the, the trips, the trip selected before, and in this case the record are highlighted in different color on the basis of the uh, transit detected in the period selected before con compared with the expected uh, transit of the period. So in order to conclude my first part of the presentation, um, we can summarize the main outcomes and the main function of the offline dashboard, saying that uh, thanks to the offline dashboard, there is the possibility to manage big data, to identify the cases potentially affected by critical issues on which, fo on which focus deeper analysis, and to provide feedback to service planning responsible in order to solve critical issues related timetable planning data. But uh, furthermore, we can also say that thanks to this kind of tool, there is the possibility to restrict the, the, the data sector to carry out more detailed, more detailed analysis through third application, as an example, shared info that is uh, um, another tool developed by, by Memex out of the, 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 the board project that uh, give the, the, the possibility to analyze the single trip and the single Bus event. Uh, as uh, Vasilis said before, thanks to the Evolve project and the Evolve platform, now the offline dashboard is able to analyze uh, a very uh, big, uh, big uh, size of data. Uh, in fact, before Evolve, uh, we had the possibility to analyze the data related uh, one month. Um, whereas now we have the possibility to analyze for a longer period uh, equal to one year. So before to move into the real-time visualization tool, I'd like uh, to show you a short video to present the, the, the tool. The offline visualization tool has been developed to make more efficient analysis on the data related different PT services than the one usually carried out by transport companies. In the first page of the dashboard, the user can select the service of interest, choosing among the different kind of service, the date, and the operational unit. 
After service selection, the tool returns the service data of interest outlining the ones potentially affected by issues or, in any case, operated not in compliance with the scheduled service. In the tables, the data are grouped by paths and lines. Based on the number of incompliances, the records are highlighted in different colors with the possibility to order the record as the user prefer. Therefore, the user can select the line or the path or both of interest in order to prepare.